I am uh, Dr. Amito Singh, pediatric and fetal cardiologist at Aster Medicity Co Coche. So today we are going to talk about uh, congenital heart diseases. Congenital heart diseases is the most common uh, con uh, congenital anomaly which is found in the pediatric population constituting about 28 percent of the total congenital defects which are present in the pediatric population. So, Considering the prevalence of congenital heart diseases, it ranges from 8 to 14 per thousand live births and if we consider the critically ill uh, severe congenital heart diseases it is about 2 to 3 per thousand live births. Taking at this prevalence, around 1.35 billion children are born with congenital heart defects worldwide and at the same prevalence, about 2 lakh children are born in India in an year. Many uh, patients who come to me, they ask with the question, why did my child had a congenital heart defect and are there any ways to prevent it? The cause of congenital heart disease is multifactorial. They could be, we can divide it into maternal factors, genetic factors, and there are certainly environmental factors too. Congenital heart defects are more prevalent in mothers who are pre-gestational diabetic. That means they are diabetic before the pregnancy and even their diab con diabetes continues throughout the pregnancy. So they were more likely to have a fetus with a congenital heart disease. For example, they are more likely to suffer from uh, transposition of great vessels in which the arteries are abnormally connected or an AV canal defect. Other factor is maternal infections such as like flu-like infections or like most importantly rubella. Although now the incidence of rubella has reduced with the mass vaccination but still it is quite prevalent and it leads to dis uh, heart defects such as pulmonary valve stenosis, patent ductus arteriosus, branch pulmonary artery stenosis. Other factors are drugs. Mothers who are, uh, who are pregnant and are consuming drugs such as for their seizures like taking anti-epileptics such as sodium valparate, phenobarbitone, phenytoin, they are more likely to develop congenital heart defects. Other drugs are those who are mothers who are for antihypertensive taking ACE inhibitor antidepressants which is now becoming quite common in a pregnant uh, uh, women so and they are taking selectively selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors which tends to increase the likelihood of developing congenital heart defect in the fetus. Obesity is also considered as uh, one of the factors to develop congenital heart diseases. Other is women consuming alcohol and smoking during pregnancy there's a high likelihood that they will have a congenital heart defect. Then there's certain genetic disorders more likely to have congenital heart defect. For example, the most common in which are we, we commonly see is the Down syndrome, that is trisomy 21. In this, 40% of these individuals are likely to su uh, suffer from congenital heart defects such as AV canal defect. Other genetic disorders such as Dijot syndrome, which were called as 22Q11 syndrome deletion, which also causes uh, uh, tetro uh, diseases like tetralogy of Fallot. These are the most commonest genetic disorders which are seen in uh, children with congenital heart defects. Now the question is, how to diagnose these defects? With the availability of uh, sophisticated ultrasound machines, which provide a high resolution imaging, we can diagnose these heart, the majority of these heart defects right in the uterus when the fetus is in the uterus itself, especially between 18 to 22 weeks of gestation. Now the question is which group of uh, mothers should get this test done for that is in the form of fetal echo should which uh, which involves a detailed evaluation of a fetal heart looking at its structure, the function and the electrical activity. 
So, these are one of the group of mothers which are high risk pop, uh, risk like which I have already enumerated with the risk factors such as infection, diabetes, those who are on drugs. But still congenital heart diseases are quite prevalent in a low risk group of population. So, if your level anomaly scan or the which we call as a level 2 scan is showing some abnormality in the heart, they must get evaluate, do a fetal echo by a pediatric cardiologist so as to diagnose these congenital heart defects much early in the fetal life. So, what would be the benefit of diagnosing it in an early fetal life? There are a lot of benefits. As number of uh, congenital heart defects have some genetic associations which we can diagnose those disorders as some of the congenital heart defects are associated with extra cardiac abnormalities too that can also be diagnosed early, much early. And even but some of the cardiac conditions which, which are not present at this time but tends to evolve over a period as the pregnancy advances. So, these can also be picked up even in the later part of the gestations also. For example, certain electrical rhythm disorders which in which the heart would be structurally normal but they would be having an abnormal electrical activity. So, these can be treated right in the uterus itself. For example, if the heart rate beat of a fetus suddenly increases, it can lead to heart failure in the uterus and lead to high drops. We can treat these babies right by give, uh, administering drugs to the mother. Also, there are a number of congenital heart diseases which would require an immediate intervention in the neonatal period. So, for example, a child who is with TGA in which the arteries are abnormally connected or TAPVC in which the veins which are draining the blood from the lungs to the left side of the heart are draining abnormally. So, these are the or, or the sphere aortic stenosis these are the group of infants which will present in their early infancy and have to be managed early in the neonatal period. So, it would be preferable to transport these mothers in utero to a cardiac center so that we can use and timely intervention can be done, thus reducing the mortality considerably. The certain symptoms which the mother can pick up over a period of first one month to one and a half months of time such as the, if the baby is having difficulty in feeding, that means the baby is unable to feed continuously, that is there are suck rest cycles out there. That means a baby is taking too long to feed, he feeds for some time, then leaves it, takes a rest and then again start, begins to feed. And also the mother might notice that in between the feeding, the baby when is taking rest, is having his difficulty in breathing increases and also he begins to there is a fore, sweating over the forehead is there. So, if this sign is present, it is also indicate that the, this child can suffer from a congenital heart defect most likely like an acyanotic heart diseases like ventricle septal defect or a large patent ductus arteriosus or an AV canal defect can be there. Apart from it, there would be number of children who would not be gaining weight as par with their other siblings. So, this would be also could be a subtle sign that the child might be suffering from a ha congenital heart defects. Other than that, there could be recurrent chest infection. That means more than two chest infections in six months period or more than three in a year which requires an oral antibiotics or an IV antibiotics or a hospitalization. For if this is present, weight loss is not, if not adequately weight gain is not there. So, this is, one should get it evaluated for a congenital heart, to rule out congenital heart defect. Apart from it, the one would be with, with cyanosis and others could also be, they could be mild cyanosis. That means, the child would not be much cyanotic initially, but when he goes, when he plays, he becomes more cyanotic or do increase his activity, there is an increase in the bluish discoloration. Or the older children, they might do a squatting, that means they walk uh, while they start running and suddenly they start squatting. This could be an also a manifestation of a congenital heart defect. Once it is diagnosed, based on what kind of lesion 
it is present, the treatment is, can be planned. For instance, the ventricle septal defect, which is the most commonest type of congenital heart defect. So, usually if it is a very large hole, so there is a misconception even among the general population as well as even among the, some of the doctors that the holes will close on its own. But a larger defect or certain types of defects which are like subarterial or subpulmonic VSDs, they might not close on their own. So, these needs to be treated and needs in the form of either a surgical therapy or catheter based intervention at around four, 3 to 4 months of age. If we do not treat them, they will become inoperatable after 1 year or 1 to 2 years of life. But on the contrary, if the lesions are small or, or they are moderate, then there are chances that it might get smaller over a period of time and might close. But it is not always necessary that the lesion will close. Other defects, the common defect like atrial septal defect, where the child remains asymptomatic and it is only your doctor who can pick up some murmur initially. And these are the group of children where we would like to do a catheter based closure of this defect at around between 2 to 4 years of age that is before the child goes to school. So, we treat the defect before the child goes to school, he becomes absolutely normal, can do the activities as the other children can do. And even his, there would be no memory that he is, he is not suffering any suffered from any heart defect. And early treatment will improve the prognosis as well as will lead, the child becomes normal, he begins to gain normally, his neurodevelopmental, uh, developmentally also the child becomes normal and hence a child can lead a normal life. So please do treat the patient children with congenital heart defect and allow the little heart to beat. If you have any doubts or questions about congenital heart disease, its diagnosis, any ma on about its management, you can put your questions in the comment box and we will be reverting you back in the comment box itself. Thank you.